Hey guys, Joe Pye here at Advanced Innovations. Welcome back to the shop. You know, a lot of the video material that I present is inspired by some of the comments or feedback or some of the things that I actually see online that I either think maybe I could contribute to something to that. But today's topic is, is one of those old wives' tale type of topics that if you do this, dear God, the sky's going to open up, it's going to rain frogs, and it's going to be the end of days. Well, hopefully not, and hopefully never, but let's talk about using a file on a lathe. Now, that's one of those topics that people say, dear God, don't do it. And if you contributed to the survey that I just posted on my channel, thank you very much. It seems that overwhelmingly, the people that, uh, you guys, you ladies, everybody, that uses a file on a lathe goes over the top which is the way I was taught, and you know we're all taught differently. And one thing you can say about the way you behave in any environment, the more experience you have, or the longer you've been doing it, the more comfortable you are in a high risk or a dangerous situation, right? It's like a lion trainer. He works with these big cats every day and thinks nothing of walking in a cage with them, but you wouldn't get me in a cage with one of them things, forget it. First topic on this list will be aside from don't do it, which I disagree with, by all means do it. The file gets ruined quickly or clogs up quickly. And why is that? Well, think about it. And these are the numbers right here that are going to prove what I'm about to say. Let's say you have a three inch diameter piece of material in your chuck. Your machine is spinning at 500 RPMs and you want to take that file and go break the edge on the file. Well, the file jams up, the edge looks like crap and, and all of a sudden you're going, what happened? You know, you're looking at the file, the file feels pretty good. Well, this is what's actually going on. Three inch diameter stock is about nine and a half inches around. If you were to slice it and unfold it, nine and a half inches linear. Okay, start there. Times of 500 RPMs. How many times does it deliver that nine and a half inches? Right there. 4,710 inches of material every minute, every 60 seconds. And that's, that's, Jeez. All right, break it down even further. 4,710 inches translates to six and a half feet, or like 79, 77 inches every second. So effectively, as soon as you've touched that file to that part, you have just exposed that cutting surface of that file to six feet worth of material. And for all you guys in the UK, that's two meters, give or take, in one spot. So if that file wasn't designed to file six feet of material in between two teeth, well, there's the reason that your file is loading up. So don't just touch the file to the part. That's not a good idea. It's just going to rag the edge of the part, and it's going to load up the file to a point where, uh, if you're lucky, you'll be able to push that debris out with a piece of brass or copper or whatever else you use to do it. I personally use brass. So keep the file moving, and if you want to slow the RPM down a little bit to drop these numbers down to the point where it doesn't jam up your file, then so be it. Uh, one of the other suggestions was to put the file with the tang facing away from you and go under the chuck. Well, you know, you do what you do and you do what you're good at and comfortable with and that has worked for you in the past, but you're not going to catch me sticking my hands under a spinning chuck with the file. That's not going to happen. I'm never going to reach under the bottom of a part. It's just not going to happen. It's a bad idea. Anything could happen. You get hung up on your sleeve. Rotation takes you under the piece and uh, probably would kill you. So let's walk out of the shop and jam a file into a spinning chuck and see exactly what happens. Let's take a walk. Before we get into the real nitty gritty of this particular presentation, when you get close to a spinning chuck, be very aware of the extension of the jaws. And when in doubt, Stop the machine and look for any chips, swarf, material, whatever that has wrapped itself around the chuck that you cannot see at a higher RPM. It may be hanging off of there like a weed whacker with a razor wire on it. And when you get close to the chuck, guess what? <laughs> Say goodbye to Mr. Finger or uh, get ready for some stitches. So keep the environment clean. Make sure that there's nothing wrapped around the chuck around the back make sure that I call this area right here I call this the toilet so if this is all full of chips and the chuck is spinning the chances of it grabbing something and winging it that's when you say oh shit and that's why I call it the toilet so flush that once in a while get underneath the machine drag it out of the way so there's no chance of it wrapping back around the machine 
All right, this is a three inch diameter piece. I'm going to position the camera behind the chuck and I'm going to show you my approach with the file and then we're going to make some contact and uh, show you whether or not the wives tales are true. Let's do it. Okay, for sake of this demonstration and the way I've worked my entire life, I am not suggesting this is going to work for you, but I make sure that I have extremely secure footing. I am not standing on something that's going to move. If there are chips underneath your wooden mat and your wooden mat is going to push away from the machine if you lean too far, then uh, make sure your footing is good. Make sure that you've got control of both of your hands. If you can rest on something for a more secure anchor, do it. When you use a file on a lathe, and forgive me, I am reaching over the chuck for this, you want the, the file as true as you can possibly get it to the face of the part, the face of the machine, in line with the jaws. It is when you start to get this way or this way that you may get in trouble. Now, controlling both ends of the file is also a very good idea. If you know where the tip is, then you can control the alignment fairly easily. And you can see that this one has been used on a lathe, but I push through it. As I'm doing it, I'll roll the file back and forth to use as much of the real estate on the file itself as I can, and I make sure that I traverse the part. So let's turn this on. Slow RPM initially. I'm going to put it on real slow. Let's do 72 RPM. I'm going to reposition the camera. We're going to see what these jaws do with a obstruction. All right, guys, next most important thing to remember when using a file on a lathe, never, never use a file that doesn't have a handle on it. Got to have a handle on it. Make sure it's a good handle. Make sure it's a handle that's reinforced, has a, has a band on it, an aluminum handle, something. You don't want this file exploding that handle if something happens. You want to be able to trust it. Okay? So, there you go. All right, for sake of this demonstration, you don't actually think I'm going to use a real file because that would be stupid. So we're going to use a wooden file. All right, here we go. Mr. Wood file. And yes, I'm putting a handle on my wood file. Let's fire it up. See if we can snap it off. 72 RPM. You're never going to file anything this slow, but chances are it would work. So if you're leaning over the machine, you got your file on your part, all is well. Let's say, oops, you encounter the tip of the file on the part. Chances are that's not going to happen because I told you before to control the tip. So the tip needs to stay beyond the envelope of revolution. Keep it outside. If the file hits, it lifts, it bounces. I do not suggest that you try this. I am very comfortable with this machine, and this is a careless thing to do, but I think you need to see it if you're new to this. The file will jump around. It will scare the crap out of you when it happens, but it will take the hit and it will jump around. If you hit the edge of the file on the part, it'll ride it. Chances are it's gonna scuff up your file, which it scuffed up this wood pretty good, but it's not gonna grab it. Turn it down even slower and see if there's any place that's going to pinch and grab. 30 RPM. Let's see if we can make it grab this. It kicks it out. It wants to break it. If you get behind the part, naturally, yeah, it's going to crack it, but I'm not going to do that because even with wood, it's not a good idea to have flying objects. Controlling the tip controls the kickback. It's not coming back at you. It's going to scare the life out of you, but it's not coming back at you. And you may say, okay, with a six jaw, well, you have extra small spaces here. As that's coming around, this file is not going to find itself into the small gap because the gap is going to be filled with material. It's going to reject it. Let's turn it up and try it again. There you go, 320 RPM. Still leaning on the machine, coming at it, still hitting. Controlling the tip, tip is beyond the workpiece, high RPM, all it's doing is bouncing. 
first time that happens, guys, I guarantee you're going to break out in a cold sweat. It's not going to grab it. If you let go, it may throw it at you, but that's the reason for the handle. you got to have a secure grip on it, and if all else fails, lift everything and step back and just take a deep breath. Let's double that speed. 720 RPM. Still leaning over the machine. Nothing. Now in my approach, I am true to the face of the machine or I am biased this way. I am not allowing the downhill side to grab. Let's try with the downhill side hitting and not the tip. Let's start off at 100 RPM. This one I don't even like, so I'm just going to move some stuff out of the way and let's see what happens. Alright, the tip is going to be facing the camera. And what I call the downhill or the in inbound side, my side, I'm going to let that hit on the jaws and see what happens. And I am well prepared to let go of this, and this will snap off if it grabs. So I am no danger right now. Now the rejection is a lot more aggressive. I can feel it pushing towards me. So the downhill side, and you can see the impact, it is taking pretty good chunks out of this. So the impact is greater on the downhill side than it would be on the uphill side. And it's hitting pretty good. It's hitting real good. Now, I'm not even going to crank this RPM up because I just think that's a bad idea to demonstrate it. Why put yourself in harm's way if you don't have to? Believe me, I don't have to. But you can see by controlling the tip of the file, keeping it true to the workpiece, and just slightly angled. If this part of the file hits, it's going to be a lot more aggressive than if that part hits. And if the tip hits, it's going to be a lot more aggressive beyond that. So, 175 RPM when the tip comes around. Actually, I'm not even going to do it under power because that's just dumb no matter what you do. But as the tip, if the tip were to engage, you can see that the force that this could exert could be considerable. If it hangs up, it's coming back. No question about it. If it gets under the jaws, it's coming back. It may kick it out, and when you rebound, you're going to lift up into the danger zone and make the situation worse. Now you've seen it. You know what you can get away with, what you can't get away with. If I were to give you any solid advice at this moment, I would say don't let the file hit the chuck jaws. Simple. But the fact that it will encounter the chuck jaws and might ring for a second, check the jaws for damage, check the file for damage, check your shorts for damage because it's going to happen. Off you go. Let's look at another way to deeper apart with some logic behind that. This little tool right here has recently become my favorite deburring tool. Initially it was intended for internal work to go down inside of a part and sweep down and deburr undercuts, shoulders, but when used on the side of an Aloris like this you can see that it is the tip of the tool here. It's the farthest projection on the side of this tool. So if the tip is clearing the chuck, if the tip is clearing the part, the jaws, you don't have to worry about anything else. Let me elaborate on that particular concept. Now for everybody that has a quick change tool holder, as you get closer to a spinning chuck, with your blocks, you want to know where everything is so none of the jaws come around and smash any part of your machine. Well anytime I change the angle of my compound I also take my quick change block and I migrate my block in or out so that when I have a tool holder loaded the face of that tool holder is the maximum projection. If the jaws on the chuck are clearing the tool holder then they're clearing the compound. If this block were to be pushed back in the adjustment, this exposed part of the compound down here would be susceptible to damage from impact. So I hope that makes sense. 
it has served me very well and you can see the tip out here that does all the work is extremely in line with everything and it's the furthest piece out believe me the camera makes it look like this is but it's really not the tip of this tool is the farthest thing out if that's clearing the chuck everything is good if in doubt set a stop on your carriage and just make sure that the carriage doesn't get any farther than the face of the tool holders make sure that the tool holders are all the same thickness so you don't get yourself in trouble and realize that you're not going to have the same projection when you take that tool holder and you move it around the other way okay here's that little land I'm telling you about that you go into a lot of shops you might see a couple of teeth marks in that or one good hit that somebody got a little too close and got the instant reminder that is another great way to do it that's another solid tool to do it with and it's exceptionally fast hope that what you saw opens your eyes to a couple of the old tails and if you could see it in focus that would be awesome there you go I hope that what I just showed you opens your eyes to a few things make sure you keep your file in line control the tip of the file slow the RPM down so you don't load the file up and if you do load up a file and the file card won't push the debris out use a small piece of brass and just rake the teeth it'll drive the debris out no problem thanks for watching guys appreciate it all right well I gotta apologize for the opening of this video with that let's jam a file into a spinning chuck kind of clickbait thing there is no way even to demonstrate a safety issue like that that I would ever jam a file into a spinning chuck I hope that what you saw me do today will give you something to think about. I am not in any way, shape, or form suggesting that, oh, it's perfectly fine to get close to a spinning chuck with a file. It's really not. It's a very dangerous environment, and when all else fails, or if your heart or your gut is telling you not to do it, then use a form tool. Okay? Form tool, get up there, break the edge, get out. All is well. Your hands are away from all the danger. So thank you for watching. I appreciate everybody that commented to the poll. Thank you very much. It lets me know that uh, I'm really not out of line with the way I think. Joe Pye, Advanced Innovations, Austin, Texas.